Hi everyone, welcome. I'm preparing to check in on a couple of bins that have been around for 224 days now. They're red wiggler worms and they've received 18 feedings up until now. And I've got another pair of red wiggler bins. They're the so-called original red wiggler bins, which are only about 11 days older than these systems here. And is that right, 11 days? Is that the only difference? I think, I think what we decided in the original Red Wiggler bins was that their 19th feeding would be their first in a number of feedings that would be sort of a hybrid um, feeding that would be almost classified as a foraging. You know, in the past for me foraging that just meant nothing new added whatsoever to the systems and that the worms are really up to, you know, they're, they've got to just make do with whatever's remaining in the system any sort of scraps of leftover food or bedding that's all they get you know and that was foraging but I, uh, I kind of came up with this concept of a hybrid sort of foraging where the main thing that I would simply be uh, withholding is the application of any new bedding materials and coming back to feed a few times but not following the focused type feeding style that I usually have which is to have a specific section of the bin that we even mark usually to show where we last fed these uh, these foraging hybrid feedings are really spread out more across the whole top of the surface to promote worm traffic everywhere rather than kind of trying to get them to come to one specific place in the bin so the um, the original Red Wigglers have, on two occasions now, had leafy matter scattered across the top. And for doing it here in these bins, my idea was to use some small particle food, like the coffee that's in this carton here, as well as some worm chow, which is, a, I think, a nice little combination. So that was going to be my way of feeding today. And we would also have a chance just to see how the, the citrus peel that we gave them 11 days ago is coming along now so let's uh let's dig in down the middle which is where we last fed citrus i believe is just one of those things that's going to take a little bit longer to break down it's somewhat resistant to the breakdown process so even after 11 days it does seem like it's holding up and is in pretty good shape and there's a nice fresh citrus scent coming out of the bin <laughs> but as you can see on every piece of citrus peel every chunk of orange peel there's a good many worms enjoying it not the least put off by anything that might seem like citric acid or anything like that so they certainly do seem to like citrus regardless of some of the wives tales you hear sometimes so I guess the wives tale that I'm referring to in this case is just the whole concept of citrus being bad or dangerous in the worm bins I think there's um there's probably more little urban legends and wives tales about what to do and not do in the worm bins than um, than actual facts. There's just so many things that are so many times proven wrong on so many worm channels. Kind of nice to see how the worms are enjoying this meal they got last time. I didn't think there'd be um, such a turnout, but they're enjoying it for sure. And at this point, I'm not too worried about just allowing some of that food to get scattered. Because while it's fun seeing all the worms hanging out down here, I do want to encourage the worms to also be working down all the other stuff that's in the system. So I think before we sort of do a top coating of the coffee and worm chow feeding, we'll just go on and give the entire system in each case a nice tilling and I'm glad to see that the moisture level everywhere seems to be right where it's at or right where it should be I think um, it uh, it's got a nice moisture level here and there it's just where there's clumps of leftover food and stuff I think is where I'm seeing a little bit of clumpiness but everywhere else it seems to flake apart from itself pretty readily and flow smoothly so I like the way that looks but we've given bin number two virtually no uh, attention. <laughs> so I would imagine we're probably in for a similar kind of turnout with the orange peels and 
in bin number two. Yeah, look at that. Very nice. And here too, it does feel like there's, uh, there's a good bit of moisture content in the material that the worms are inhabiting down here near the middle where the feedings have been getting applied. I think, uh, I think all we've got left to do is just to till in a little bit of material from the outer edges and then we'll be able to give them their coffee and worm chow treat. I have my water bottle here on the ready if we needed it, but the first thing you saw when you went to the very outer edge and picked up a handful of material was that it was loaded with worms. And you can tell just from touching it too that the material's got a nice moisture content to it. I mean, you can see how thoroughly those plastic bags were out here draped across the top surface. So these systems have been um, given the opportunity to hang on to their existing moisture content. And the plastic does a really good job if you cover thoroughly. Even if you don't cover that thoroughly, it does a great job. A lot of times if I don't have edge-to-edge -edge plastic protection to prevent evaporation, I see a little bit of drying around the outer edges of certain systems where I've got sort of imperfect or slightly inferior plastic coverings. But um, all you got to do is get inboard of that, and you're definitely in a spot where uh, a lot of moisture is recirculating, and usually a good amount of worm traffic is hanging out there, too. So, not much left to do. I figured, what the heck, let's give them a little bit of grit, lay that down as a foundation. That should get their attention once they roll up into this material here. They'll have a nice top coating of coffee to nibble on, and it feels to me like we might be at the end of this. Yep, that's about it. Only, only a sprinkling remaining, so pretty nice, nice amount of coffee, onto which we're going to throw a little bit of my worm chow, and that's pretty much going to be their feeding. I mean, the moisture level in here is so nice, i got to admit. I don't know why, I've just got this sort of urge to add moisture, I don't know why. <laughs> I'm wondering if perhaps we could just allow me to indulge that desire. I don't know why I feel like I want to do it, but perhaps we can use the dampening of this paper. Yeah, that'll be it. <laughs> Let's use the dampening of this paper as the reason why we want to come in here just for a moment with the spray bottle and dampen them. And you know what? Here we go. My glove makes for the perfect excuse. Getting all this lovely casting material off my glove, right back down into the worm bin. And I guess just things getting a little bit wet as a result of doing that is a little bit of collateral damage that we're just going to have to live with. And the worms, I'm sure, are not going to argue with it. They're probably actually saying, bring it on. <laughs> Give me more. So that's pretty much it for our check-in now with these, these red wigglers getting feeding number 19 here. A surface feeding, not a focused feeding that needs a feeding zone indicator, but more of a feeding that's meant to um, encourage worms to be moving throughout the entire system in both cases and nipping off whatever's left in here and may maybe the moisture will even um, inspire them to do a li little more than that as well. So that's it for the video, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.